The Star Wars Holiday Special is a 1978 Canadian-American television film set in the Star Wars galaxy. It stars the series' first film's main cast while introducing the character Boba Fett, who would appear in later films. It is one of the first official Star Wars spin-offs and was directed by Steve Binder. The show was broadcast in its entirety only once, in the United States, on Friday, November 17, 1978, on the U.S. television network CBS from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time pre-empting Wonder Woman and the Incredible Hulk, and on the Canadian television network CTV from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It was also broadcast in New Zealand on TVNZ and in Australia on the Seven Network. In the storyline that ties the special together, Chewbacca and Han Solo visit Cash Yike, Chewbacca's home world, to celebrate Life Day. They are pursued by agents of the Galactic Empire, who are searching for members of the Rebel Alliance on the planet. The special introduces three members of Chewbacca's family. His father Richie, his wife Mala and his son Lumpy, though these names were later explained to have been nicknames, their full names being Atticheat Cook, Malato Buck and Lump Armor Rump, respectively. The program also features many other Star Wars characters, including Luke Skywalker, C-3PO, R2-D2, Darth Vader and Princess Leia. The program includes stock footage from Star Wars and also features a cartoon produced by Toronto-based Nell Vanner that officially introduces the bounty hunter Boba Fett. Scenes also take place in outer space and in spacecraft including the Millennium Falcon and an Imperial Star Destroyer. The variety show segments and cartoon introduce a few other locales, such as a cantina on the desert planet of Tatura and a red ocean planet known as Panna. The special is notorious for its extremely negative reception. Anthony Daniels, in a documentary promoting the worldwide tour of Star Wars, in concert, notes with a laugh that the Star Wars universe includes the horrible holiday special that nobody talks about. Nathan Rabin of the AV Club wrote, I'm not convinced the special wasn't ultimately written and directed by a sentient bag of cocaine. George Lucas did not have significant involvement with the film's production and was reportedly unhappy with the results. However, Patty Maloney, who played Lumpy, stated in 2008 that Lucas was sent dailies of each day's shooting for approval. David Acomba, a classmate of Lucas at USC Film School, had been selected to direct the special, but he chose to leave the project, a decision supported by Lucas. The Star Wars Holiday Special has never been rebroadcast or officially released on home video. It has therefore become something of a cultural legend due to the underground quality of its existence. It has been viewed and distributed in off-air recordings made from its original telecast by fans, which were later adapted to content-sharing websites via the Internet. Plot on Life Day, Chewbacca, accompanied by Han Solo, is headed home to see his family. Along the way, the duo are chased by two Star Destroyers, but they escape into hyperspace. Meanwhile, on Cash Yike, Chewbacca's family is preparing for his return. Hoping to find the Millennium Falcon, his wife, Mala, runs a computer scan for starships in the area, but is unsuccessful. Mala contacts Luke Skywalker, who, along with R2-D2, is working on his X-Wing starfighter. Luke tells her that he does not know what happened. Mala contacts Sorn Dan, a local human trader. He tells her through a carefully warded message that Han and Chewbacca are on their way and should be arriving soon. Mala then attempts to prepare a meal, the instructions of which are being aired via a local cooking show by an eccentric four-armed alien cook, Chef Gormanda. Sorndan arrives with Life Day gifts for everyone, including a virtual reality fantasy program for Itchy. Back on the Falcon, Chewbacca and Han have just come out of hyperspace not far from Cash Yike. Han notices an increased Imperial presence, so they decide to land in an unguarded area to the north. 
As they enter the atmosphere, Lumpy hears the roaring of the ship. Believing Han and Chuya might be arriving, Mala opens the door, but instead finds two stormtroopers and officers. The Imperials force their way into the house. An officer orders a search for Chewbacca. As they search, Saun Dan and the others attempt to distract them with food and Mala's music video box. When the music finishes, the head officer orders the search to continue. The head officer tells Mala to keep Lumpy busy while they search his room. So Lumpy watches a cartoon on a view screen of one of his father's many adventures. The cartoon shows Luke, Han and Leah's first encounter with Boba Fett. During a search for a talisman, the Millennium Falcon crashes on a water planet known as Panna. Upon landing, they run into Fett, who claims to want to help them after saving Luke from a giant monster that attacks him from behind. They all board the Falcon, where Han has been infected by a mysterious leaping virus caused by the talisman. Luke then contracts the virus as well. Fett and Chuya go into Panna City to get the cure. Once they get into the Imperial-occupied city, Fett instructs Chuya to stay behind while he gets the cure. Once away from Chuya, Fett contacts Darth Vader. On the Falcon, as a C-3PO is caring for Han and Luke, R2-D2 intercepts the call between Vader and Fett, causing worry for C-3PO. Evading the Imperials, Fett and Chuya return to the Falcon with the cure. After everyone recovers from the virus, they learn of Fett's true allegiances. Fett blasts away in his jetpack, promising that they'll meet again. Everyone then escapes from the planet and back to the rebel base on board the Falcon. When the cartoon finishes, Lumpy works to create a translation device from his Amorphian machine that will fool the Imperials into returning to their base by faking their commander's voice. To do so, he first must watch the manual for the device being presented by a malfunctioning, incompetent robot. While the Imperials are all searching downstairs, the living room view screen activates, announcing that Tathwa is now being put under curfew by the Empire due to subversive forces. The video is announced as required viewing for all Imperial forces and much of it features Akmana running the MO's Isley Cantina. Part of the scene is shown in the bar. Akmana is approached by an admirer, Krellman, an amorous alien, who misunderstood something she said to him the other night. When the Empire announces the curfew, Akmana announces a last drink, and when the creatures ignore her, she sings a fun song, Good Night but not goodbye, set to the cantina band theme. Lumpy uses this opportunity to put his plan into motion, faking a repeated call for the Imperials to return to base. They leave, but the head officer instructs one of the stormtroopers to stay behind. After the other Imperials leave, the stormtrooper still hears the repeating signal and realizes they were tricked. He finds Lumpy and destroys the machine, then chases Lumpy outside. As they both run onto the deck, Han and Chewbacca arrive. He says goodbye to Han and stays with his family. Chewie protects Lumpy as Han dispatches the stormtrooper. After reuniting with everyone, an Imperial officer appears on the view screen, giving a general alert for the missing stormtrooper. Sorn Dan quickly says that the trooper stole food and supplies and deserted and the officer says he will send out a search party. The danger averted, the family prepares to go to the festival at the Tree of Life. The family is seen in space, traveling toward a bright star. They walk into it, arriving at the Great Tree of Life, where many Wookiees dressed in red robes are gathered. As Chewbacca takes the stage, C-3PO and R2-D2 suddenly appear, along with Luke, Leia and Han. Leia gives a short speech on the meaning of Life Day and sings a song in celebration, to the tune of the Star Wars theme. At the conclusion of the ceremony, Chewbacca remembers his adventures in the previous film and promises he will somehow come back to Luke, Han, Leia, R2 and 3PO. That night, the Wookiee family sit around the feast table, celebrating the day and being back together again. Cast Harrison Ford as Han Solo, Peter Mayhew as Chewbacca, Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker, 
Carrie Fisher as Princess Leia, Anthony Daniels as C-3PO, Kenny Baker as R2-D2, Don Franks as Boba Fett, James Earl Jones as Darth Vader, B. Arthur as Akmana, Art Carney as Trader Sworn Dan, Diahan Carroll as Mermir Holographic, Jefferson Starship as Holographic Band, Harvey Korsman as Krellman, Chef Gormanda, a Morphean instructor, Mickey Morton as Mala, Paul Gale as Itchy, Patty Maloney as Lumpy, Alec Guinness as Obi-Wan Kenobi, Leslie Schofield as Imperial Officer. Production, according to Charles Lippincott, who was head of marketing of what was termed the Star Wars Corporation, CBS brought the idea of doing a TV special to Lucas, although there is some debate within Lucas's inner circle about this claim. Lucas was not heavily involved with the special, and his name does not appear in its credits. Still it was Lucas' idea to build the narrative around a family of speechless Wookiees and their celebration of Life Day. Bruce Valanche, who was hired as a writer, was concerned about the challenges this decision would pose to writing and feared that the special would turn into one long episode of Lassie. Regardless Lucas would not budge on the story the special went through two directors. The first, David DeComba, was brought in in an attempt to make us different in variety shows, according to Lippincott. Ecombo was unfamiliar with a multi-camera setup, which caused some issues. Ecombo also felt that there was a divide between him and the producers and quit after finishing only a few scenes. He was replaced by Steve Binder. Binder never got to meet Lucas before the show, but instead got a Wookiee Bible detailing how Wookiees were supposed to look and behave. Reception The Star Wars Holiday Special was very poorly received both by Star Wars fans and the general public. David Hofsted, author of What Were They Thinking? The 100 Dumbest Events in Television History, ranked the Holiday Special at number one calling it the worst two hours of television ever. Shepard Smith, a news anchor for the Fox News Channel, referred to it as a 70s train wreck, combining the worst of Star Wars with the utter worst of variety television. The only aspect of the special which has been generally well received is the animated segment which introduces Boba Fett, who would later become a popular character when he appeared in the Star Wars films. George Lucas George Lucas himself disliked the special and reportedly said, If I had the time and a sledgehammer, I would track down every copy of that show and smash it, in an online chat with fans. He reportedly said, The holiday special does not represent my vision for Star Wars. In an interview in the May 2002 Maxim magazine, when asked if there were plans for a special edition of the special, Lucas responded, Right. That's one of those things that happened and I just have to live with it. In a May 2005 interview with StaticMultimedia.com, Lucas was asked if the film had soured him on working in television. He replied, The special from 1978 really didn't have much to do with us, you know. I can't remember what network it was on, but it was a thing that they did. We kind of let them do it. It was done by, I can't even remember who the group was but they were variety TV guys. We let them use the characters and stuff and that probably wasn't the smartest thing to do, but you learn from those experiences. The official Star Wars site states that the holiday special delivered mixed results and states that the highlight of the special was the Boba Fett animated segment. The official site also says, when referring to the fan interest in seeing the Wookiees on screen, the 1978 holiday special didn't cut it when asked at a fan convention, so, you don't like it either. Lucasfilm head of content and fan relations, Steve Sansweet replied, no, I mean, I like the 10-minute introduction of Boba Fett. But that's about it. The official site also refers to the Boba Fett animated segment as a cult classic. On February 8, 2006, Harrison Ford made an appearance on Late Night with Conan O'Brien to promote his film, Firewall. During the interview, Conan O'Brien brought up the special and began asking various questions regarding it, such as inquiring whether he remembered making it. 
Ford said nothing, but looked away and shook his head nervously, then saying he had no memory of it whatsoever and it, therefore, doesn't exist. The audience responded with laughter and applause. O'Brien then asked Ford what he would think if he played a clip of the special on the show. Ford jokingly grabbed him, then said that, it, never seen it, maybe it'll be nice, uncomfortably anxious and distracted. Ford suffered through the clip and then muttered a growl, sarcastic, thank you. On the 2010 television program Times Talk, New York Times columnist David Carr asked Carrie Fisher about the special. She said that she made George Lucas give her a copy of the special in exchange for recording DVD commentary for the Star Wars films. She added that she shows it at parties. Mainly at the end of the night when I want people to leave, recognition the special was ranked at number three in the five goofiest moments of the Star Wars mythos. In the 62nd issue of UK's Star Wars magazine, TV Guide ranked this special at number 11 on their 25 most hilarious holiday TV moments, mentioning that it was unintentionally hilarious. TV Guide and TV Land ranked the Star Wars Holiday Special at number 59 on their Top 100 Unexpected Television Moments in a five-part special that aired from December 5th until December 9th in 2005. In a 2008 online poll on Christmas specials by the Paley Center for Media, the Star Wars Holiday Special was selected to be shown at the center by 59% of the voters. It beat out a Charlie Brown Christmas, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, among others. International distribution The program was seen in Canada on CTV on the same evening as the CBS broadcast. Toronto CTV station CFTO-TV aired the program at 7 p.m., an hour earlier than seen on the nearest American outlet, WIVB-TV in Buffalo, New York. It was also distributed and seen in Australia and New Zealand. It was also shown by Swedish SVT on May 31, 1979 as Stjarnor Krig, Och Fred. The special was also broadcast in Venezuela on Venevision, Honduras on Canal 5, Brazil and at least twice in Argentina. It has been broadcast in France on January 1, 1979 on TF1, in a shortened 72-minute version, dubbed in French, segments. The Star Wars Holiday Special is significant for being the first film-length Star Wars story after the original theatrical film and for showing an expanded look at parts of that universe. The main focus of the Holiday Special is the blockade of Cash Yike. But for the most part, the plot serves as little more than a means to string together a series of musical numbers, celebrity cameos and other variety show acts. These include songs and comedy routines by such 1970s talents as Jefferson Starship, Diahan Carroll, Art Carney, Harvey Korsman and Beatha. Easily the most notable segment is an animated cartoon featuring the pre-Empire Strikes Back debut of Boba Fett. Music The special features four songs. This Minute Now is sung by Diahan Carroll. Carol, who is supposed to be an image created by a virtual reality machine, tells Chewbacca's father, Itchy, that she is his fantasy and suggestively invites him to experience her, light the sky on fire, performed by Jefferson Starship, which is presented as a 3D music video watched by one of the Imperial Guards. During production the song was given the working title, Cigar Shaped Object. Later, B. Arthur, who plays a bartender in the morning's Isley Cantina, sings Good Night, but not Goodbye, to the same set of aliens that were seen in the cantina in Star Wars, including, as the backup musicians, the cantina's resident group, Figurin D.A.N. and the modal nodes. Finally, at the end of the special, Carrie Fisher sings a song in celebration of life day to the tune of the Star Wars main title. Comedy Harvey Korsman provides comedy in three of the special skits, including the cantina skit with Beatha where he plays a barfly who drinks through a hole in the top of his head. He also performs two solo routines.
one as Chef Gourmanda, a four-armed parody of Julia Child and one as a malfunctioning amorphian android in an instruction video watched by Lumpy. Art Carney has a more integral role in the story, playing a trader named Thorn Dan on Cash Yike who is a member of the Rebellion and helps Chewie's family. His segments are also largely played for laughs and at one point includes a scene alluding to his character Ed Norton from The Honeymooners where an imperial officer demands that he get on with it, while Carney dallies with a prop. Cartoon The high point of the special is generally considered to be the animated segment known as The Faithful Wookiee, which was produced by Toronto animation firm Nelvana Limited. The music and sound effects are derived from the film, along with the vocal talents of the main cast from the film. The cartoon introduces Boba Fett. Thirty years later in 2007, Hasbro released a Boba Fett action figure, using the likeness from the animated cartoon and titled Boba Fett. Other bits The holiday special also includes a circus-style acrobatics routine that includes uneven bars and juggling. All the acts were loosely linked together with material which involves the Wookiees' preparation for Life Day. Han and Chewie's attempt to evade the Imperials and make it to Chewie's family and the Imperial garrison's search for rebels.